Hello everyone, my name is Samson and I'm from Seoul National University. In this talk, I'm going to present ASAP, Fast and Mobile Application Switch via Adaptive Prepaging. This is a joint work of Seoul National University, Sungkyunkwan University, and Google. Memory capacity is becoming a scarce resource on mobile devices. As shown in the figure, the size of popular applications have been growing rapidly. Furthermore, a user study shows that today's smartphone users run more than five applications concurrently. However, the cost, power, and the area budget often limits the memory size of devices. As a result, today's mobile system is often operating under heavy memory pressure. This memory pressure can potentially degrade user experience. Especially, it can cause latency when users switch applications. It is known that users switch applications more than 100 times a day. Therefore, it is crucial to maintain low switch latency. To understand how memory pressure causes latency, let me, exp let me explain an example of how Android, one of the most popular mobile operating system, handles memory pressure. The figure shows the initial state of the system. When user touches the calendar icon, Android creates the process of calendar from scratch and allocates pages of a calendar or memory. We call this initial launching process an application launch, which is known to cause long latency. Next, two more applications are launched and available memory is used up. At this moment, Android starts to evict pages of a calendar app to secure more free memory. Android uses in-memory compressed soft device such as a ZRAM, so the anonymous pages are compressed in memory for page eviction. And file-backed pages are discarded from memory as in usual OS. When user clicks the calendar app again, the app comes foreground with its last used context. This is called the application switch and it takes very short time in usual cases. However, if calendar access to the compressed, pa compressed page in switching, the compression is required in this case, so the switching is delayed. Likewise, the evicted file pages should be read from disk on demand, so switching is delayed. The other way Android uses is a low memory killer. When low memory killer kills the calendar app, its process and all pages are freed up from memory. In this case, switching to calendar requires a relaunching of application to cause a long, late, long latency. To quantify the effect of a memory pressure, we measure the switching latency of eight popular real-world Android applications in different scenarios. First, these two bars show that the switch time under heavy memory pressure and the normal launch time representing relaunch of application. We observe that even when most pages are not in memory, launch time is slower than switch time in all cases. This implies that it is better to avoid the relaunching by, dis by disabling low memory killer. Second, we compare the switch time under high memory pressure with the switch time without the pressure. This time we observe that switch time can increase by four times on average compared to the no pressure case. This implies that retrieving relevant pages on demand can increase the switch time a lot. We found out that both CPU and disk bandwidth are underutilized in switch time. This is because both page decompression and the disk IO are delayed until page fault occurs in demand page based, demand paging based page fetching. The graph shows that CPU and disk bandwidth utilization during switch time of a benchmark applications. It shows that on average, only 34% of the CPU and 15% of disk bandwidth are utilized. As a result of this, the system is spending more time in switching than necessary. To improve this, leveraging a prepaging technique can be helpful. The idea is that switch time can be improved, improved by aggressively doing decompression and the IO at the beginning of a switch. By doing so, CPU cycles and disk bandwidth can be fully utilized 
and the switch time can be much closer to the switch time without the pressure. So our goal is to reduce the switching latency by leveraging pre-paging. To design a practical pre-paging technique, the two challenging questions must be answered. The first question is what to pre-page? To initiate decompression and the IO at the beginning of a switch, we should know what pages will be used at the next switch. This is not trivial because the application's contexts keep changing at every switch. Under this circumstance, the pre-paging technique should achieve high coverage and low miss prediction at the same time. The second is how to pre-page. To reduce the switching latency, the pre-paging should fetch pages in a way maximizing the resource utilization. Moreover, the contention between pre-paging thread and application thread should be minimized. As a solution to these challenges, we present ASAP application switch via adaptive pre-paging. ASAP maintains low switching latency without low memory killer, and ASAP is application agnostic and requires no changes to application codes. To achieve high coverage, ASAP logs both page faults and IO syscalls occurred in switch time. Also, to achieve low miss prediction ratio, ASAP adaptively update what to pre-page based on feedback. For how to pre-page, ASAP uses multiple threads for pre-paging and let those threads to use CPU opportunistically. Through this, it can achieve a high resource utilization and low, low contention. Now let me explain ASAP's design in detail. We integrated ASAP into Android and ASAP is composed of two components, switch footprint estimator and the pre-paging pre manager. First, switch footprint estimator, in short SFE, decides what to pre-page. For every switch, SFE logs a list of pages fetched by demand paging in switch time. To get this information, SFE relies on page fault handler and the read write system call as shown in the figure. From this list, ASAP generates two tables for each application, candidate table and the pre-paging target table. Candidate table is a list of pages that are frequently accessed in last switches. Pre-paging target table is a list of pages that are pre-paged by pre-paging threads. Using these tables, ASAP can achieve high coverage and low miss prediction. The figure shows how SFE generates pre-paging target table from page fetching information. Page fetching information is logged into a buffer called the fault buffer. And when switch is done, SFE examines entries in fault buffer to check if there exists a match in candidate table. If the match is found, it is promoted to pre-paging target table. It is possible that page information in the pre-paging target table becomes obsolete due to the changing context of applications. So if a page in pre-paging target table is not used in switch time, it is evicted from the table. One thing to notice that pages have a different access patterns depending on the page type. The two graph shows how many times pages are accessed out of 10 different switches. The left shows fallback pages and the other shows anonymous pages. On average, 75% of fallback pages are accessed nine or 10 times out of 10 different switches. Whereas only 44% of anonymous pages do so. Based on this observation, we take different approach in designing SFE for each type of page. To exploit the static access pattern, SFE for fallback pages uses a static candidate table, which is generated from offline profiling. In contrast, SFE for anonymous pages, pages uses dynamic candidate table, which is updated dynamically on runtime. Moving on to the next, Pre-paging manager takes charge of a how to pre-page. Its goal is to achieve high resource utilization and low thread contention. First, for high resource utilization, at the beginning of a switch, pre-paging manager spawns multiple pre-paging threads. Then it lets them to aggressively fetch pages in pre-paging target table of a switching application. 
For fetching, PrickPaging Manager uses the functions in soft cache and page cache layer. Second, PrickPaging Manager optimizes PrickPaging threads so that contention between the threads is minimized. Let me explain these optimizations briefly. First, since the pre-paging thread access to pre-paging target table and the inode concurrently, minimizing lock contention between the pre-paging threads is necessary to achieve a high efficiency. To do so, we implement pre-paging in a batch processing manner. We use the 16 anonymous pages as a batch, and we use the old target pages of a one file as a batch. Second, pre-paging threads should not incur CPU contention with the application threads. To do so, we give SCAD idle priority to pre-paging threads so that they use the CPU opportunistically. Lastly, let me summarize the evaluation of ASAP. For evaluation, we implemented and integrated ASAP into Android OS. And we evaluated on Google Pixel 4 and the Google Pixel 3a. Their spec is shown in the left table. And we select the eight popular mobile applications as benchmark for switching latency. latency. To make our evaluation more realistic, we automated their usage pattern using script so that switching context changes at every switch. The graph shows the normalized speed up in switching latency of ASAP over the baseline. Here, unknown only and the file only shows the results when pre-paging is enabled for one type only. And the ASAP shows the case when both are enabled. The baseline is switching latency of each application where eight applications run concurrently, where the devices are under heavy memory pressure. As a result, ASAP achieves latency reduction up to 33.3% and the average of a 22.2% on Google Pixel 4. And ASAP achieves a similar level of latency reduction on Pixel 3a. Also, the result shows that pre-paging for each type of page attributes to the latency reduction. This shows that ASAP's pre-paging technique works effectively on real devices. Next, we evaluate the resource utilization to verify the effectiveness of a pre-paging. The graph shows the CPU utilization in switch time, and the x-axis of the graph is a normalized timeline of a switch of each application. With the ASAP, CPU utilization increases 35% in the best case and 18% in on average. Especially, the utilization noticeably increases at the early phase of a switching, and the switch is finished earlier due to that. Similarly, disk bandwidth utilization is also increased in most cases. One exception is Angry Bird. ASAP's effect in Angry Bird is marginal because Angry Bird uses multiple threads in switch time by default. Finally, we evaluate the accuracy of SFE. The left graph shows precision and recall of SFE for anonymous pages, and the other one shows the SFE for fallback pages. Here, higher precision means lower misprediction rate, and the higher recall means higher coverage. As shown in the graph, SFE for fileback pages shows better precision due to the static access pattern of fileback pages. However, SFE for anonymous pages shows better recall due to the runtime update of a dynamic candidate table. To sum up, we first identified the performance bottleneck in application switch and the root cause of a low resource utilization in switch time. As a solution to this problem, we present ASAP, which is an application agnostic prepaging technique. We implemented the ASAP on real system and achieved up to 35.7% latency reduction. This is the end of my talk. And if you have any question, please contact me at the following email. Thank you for listening.